Shimon, we were just talking off camera, but the uh, this last question would be on uh, in design. Uh, people when they get excited about design initially, they say, "Okay, I, I I've bought in. I believe it. I want to create. I want to be the nomad. I want to do these new exciting things." <laughs> but they don't want to destroy. And I'd like to ask you, what do you think the relationship is there between destruction and creation for design? Okay, this is why, I mean, we, we are in, in our uh, system here, we are using two terms, uh, which one of them may be used, but in different aspects, different meaning in the US, degrees of freedom. And the second uh, is self-disruption. Uh, or in Hebrew, you see, in, in Hebrew it sounds a bit different uh, because in Hebrew the word for stratagem or for cunning is tahpula, uh, which actually comes from the root chet bet lamed, which means uh, disrupting, destroying, uh, attacking or terrorizing. I mean, all the same. So, in the Inimo, we call it Tahbula Atzmit. Self-disruption. Self, I mean, self-cunning. I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm inventing words. Now, the point is, you see, uh, people, I mean, there's this ongoing, I mean, universal uh, discourse on innovation and creation and people everybody wants to be a creator I mean yeah but but in order to create uh, you must destroy why destroy because by destroying first of all you create the potential to create <laughs> moreover <clears throat> which means I mean unless you destroy something you cannot create you cannot bring in there's no, not room for uh, space for everything I mean yeah. you have to destroy in order to create and, and we're talking here at the cognitive level oh definitely because, because what happens which you also you have destroy. organizational and institutional and structural manifestations as well I mean yeah. now uh, you see in our, in our so and we're playing with these two words I mean with these two degrees of freedom uh, which, uh, when you explain it to people, uh, they think, okay, uh, let me, I'll just look. They're, they're seeking for degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom do not exist in the world. You have to create them. How you create them? By probably manipulating, destroying. I mean, you have to create space. Uh, you have to make decisions that if I'm removing this aside, then I have room to function. I have room to maneuver. Uh, and this is what we mean creating the use of freedom. So these two uh, uh, concepts are linked to a, th a third concept that we call mediation or operating from the middle or the idea of the uh, uh, unity of oppositions. By, and we talked about that in the first day. And they are all, all linked together, all reside in the same uh, conceptual, men, mental context or milieu or framework. So look, in order to create something, you have to very much destroy something that occupies a certain space in your mind. Uh, because in order, I mean, what, what do we mean by creating? By creating, we mean either I identify something that is missing and I create something that will very much uh, uh, answer uh, the need, the necessity implied by the missing, by the absence. Okay, am I clear? Or uh, in another aspect, creating means not repeating what I already know. Now, wait a minute. Uh, you know, remember, our all discourses, uh, the world keeps changing. Uh, to pantare in Greek, it's a 
perpetual flow, which very much implies that every time you're looking out of the window, as the general, the general, the designer is supposed to do, you see a different world. Uh, now, when you see something different, uh, most people will either run away uh, or deny, saying, ah, it is exactly what happened yesterday, or the day before, or the week before, or a year before. Ah, we know what it is. Uh, when people tell you, we know what it is, it's a mode of denial. Uh, and the general and the designer cannot afford that. I mean, when you see something, uh, f you have to be aware or deliberately recognize it as something different, which means I'm confused. The way you see, when you see something different, what do, what do we mean by that? Recognizing difference means I don't understand that because if it's different, it is it different from what I know, what I possess, what I use, what I practice. If it's different, it means I don't understand. So, for in, in our process, design starts with recognizing your own perplexity. I do not understand. Absolutely. There's, a, there's an interesting... Which, in a way, the, it's the first step into destruction. Yes. Because you recognize that what you know doesn't answer the challenges implied by what you see. And when you admit, I am perplexed, you actually destroy, again, you destroy in a softer sense Conception, what you know. Yeah, yeah. I actually recognize that what I know doesn't help me. That's the first step. And then, again, of course, there are other aspects to that, which are uh, when you look deeper and deeper, you, f you frame the issue deeper, uh, and you move from logic to form, you realize that the organization, the way we are organized, the way we communicate, the way we talk, the way we practice, will very much impede our ability to exploit this logic in a new way, in a relevant way. So, I have to very much ignore which is a way of destroying, because we are talking not about really burning the books of doctrine, but really pushing them a bit aside from the center of the table. <clears throat> Again, look at that metaphor. In your case, in America, at the center of the table lies the doctrinal books, the holy books. And there, actually, the, the ultimate impediment, the ultimate obstruction to creativity. You because can't. if you obey what's written there, you, you will never understand the difference in the emergence. Now, what we say is, let's start by removing the books to the corner of the table. Or maybe, I mean, push them over the table. All of a sudden, there is room. Uh, and I can start by, eh, I'm perplexed, but let me think how I think. And I start constructing an, an understanding. And all of a sudden, something new emerges. I mean, it's, it's being I mean, erected on the table because there's room. So you see, when, when the discussion, the way Boyd, Boyd I mean, presented it, which I think is, is a great way, and Boyd is one of our major sources of inspiration. But, but, uh, but remember, Boyd was a product of a certain culture or of a certain institution, um, and 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 in America and even in the IDF, when you tell people destroy, they are appalled. I mean, we destroy. We've got the best military, you've got the best Air Force, we've yeah, got the best military. The doctrine back but what, what do you mean? Oh, we have the best doctrine, I mean, which yeah. is the basis of everything. It has worked before. 
Definitely. Yeah. There's, there's an interesting uh, historic example that we use in this, and, and I know drawing from the British in the interwar period is risky, but in this one case, uh, their aviation, they had an aviation unit in uh, the interwar period, and they were receiving these new airplanes. The mm -hmm. engineers were making them, and, mm -hmm. and they were pushing out these new and new models, and they were trying new different things, and they would give the instruction manual with each of the airplanes. And out of 19 airplanes, one airplane, this one squadron would take to the side, and they'd tell their pilots, you can all follow the instructions and follow the doctrine mm -hmm. and fly 19 of these, but this one plane. They stripped out all the instructions, they stripped out all the controls, and they said, don't follow the rules. We need to rip open new opportunities to test, because we think the engineers might be wrong. This is why when we model the, the designer, I mean cognitively, uh, the designer, yeah, we always, I mean designer must be a curious guy, yeah, must be, but he must be an, both an idealist and an heretic. And heretic. And he, ma uh, uh, and, and he must operate within this tension between idealism and heresy. Uh, because, and again, um, it's very easy to disagree or destroy something outside there that belongs to somebody else. We start by destroying uh, what I just explained to you. We start by very much disagreeing with ourselves. Recogni when I recognize deliberately that I'm perplexed, it means I have already admitted that everything I know is irrelevant. Doesn't help me. Which means there is room to create something different, new, more relevant. This is how it works. So it starts and it's it's not easy. It's dangerous. It's dangerous and it's painful. And it's the most threatening thing to a human being. The institution will say, Why are you doing that? Yeah. In, in the, the in the British example, the engineers who were delivering the airplanes were like, What are you doing? The organization was saying, What are you doing? Even the pilots that were following the instructions, what are you doing? But that one plane was that opportunity for them to gain an advantage that no one else had even envisioned yeah. for real applications. Yeah. So, so you see, even an individual, I mean, yeah. you look at the general, look at the, the guy from the Air Force, I mean, participating in, so, in, in a course, eh, what I know have served me so well, look, I'm a general, why should I change? Uh -huh. See, why should I look for something different? Why should I look for an alternative? It worked well for me. And remember the, the former chief of Air Force who took a rich, powerful, dominant Air Force and said, guys, that's not good enough. We, I mean, in order, you see people, everybody talks about change and transformation, the chief. And as, as the J3 said, everybody talks about transformation, but actually nobody is transforming anything. Why? Because in order to change, you have to destroy. Not physically, to burn, to kill. To this. You have to very much reject, ignore, move to the side. <clears throat> Something that you possess, that you hold dear. And all of a sudden, it's, it's irrelevant. So the first step to innovation, yeah. which is what everyone oh, wants, yeah. is actually destruction. Destruction. Yeah, which is a big word. By the way, in Hebrew, we are using a different word, which is softer. Um, and and in, in the way we translate it, the, 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 you see destruction and creation. Destruction in Hebrew means hashmada. Hashmada. Yeah, more annihilation. Which means... Annihilation, the same word. Uh, the word we use is stira, which is also, it's a softer word, which means disagreeing, ignoring, pulling aside, but also destroying mentally. I mean, actually stira means uh, destroying conceptually.
Because it's contradicting. I mean, huh? the closest thing would be contradiction. The stira. Yeah, con- disagreeing, contradicting. Yeah, uh, but not denying. Mm-hmm. Not denying. But the, the the cultural resistance in Western industrialized militaries just based upon the traditions, the structures, the professional education, the ranks, everything is geared towards not doing that yeah, with the boss. I know, because right? we are idealists. That's the problem. This is why the designer must operate within the tension of idealism and heresy. Uh, and, and idealism means we, are, I mean, everything that we know is sacred. <laughs> so the senior leaders that are across militaries that are trying to do this, that really do want that innovation, one of the best things they can do is foster those safe environments yeah. for their yeah. subordinates that want to do this design to have those discussions of annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fantastic. Okay. Yeah. We're done. What a great ending. Okay. Wow.